everybody. It's, uh, it's your boy CA Motivate. So welcome to another episode of More Than Just a Game. Uh, this is uh, week four. Uh, and uh, tonight we have a very special guest. Uh, you know, she's been instrumental uh, in the rugby development for uh, women rugby development, girls rugby development here in Victoria. Uh, not only is she working uh, in that environment, but she's also she was also part of the inaugural uh, Super Rugby Women's Team, the Rebels, when uh, it first started. And uh, today, uh, we have the honour and the privilege of having her with us tonight. Uh, and that is Sammy Homer. Sammy, welcome to the podcast. Thanks, Chris. Great to How be are... here. I love the introduction. <laughs> Makes well, you feel very special. <laughs> well, good, well, good, man. It's a, it's a bit of, uh, you know, I'm like a bit of deja vu because I remember uh, when you uh, first come into um, the, the the elite uh, Vic system as a, as a, yep. as a um, uh, DO and uh, and that, that uh, you know, we sat down in um, our office just chatting about, you know, women's rugby now. Like, this was like, what, four or five years ago? Yeah, yeah. Um, but just to see, uh, you know, back, we're here now, and, you know, I want to share about your successes and what you've been able to achieve and a bit of your story. Um, no, it's just awesome. Just... Yeah, it's awesome to sort of be able to reconnect after, you know, we met in the very early days of my first sort of gig at Rugby Victoria as a development officer. So it's um, exciting to sort of see the journey up until now and have a chat with yeah. you. So. No, Bring exactly. You know, it's awesome to see your journey and uh, what you've been able to achieve. And we're going to touch on a few of those things uh, uh, later today. But, man, you're a bit of a jack of all, jack of all trades, like playing different sports there, eh? like uh, netball, touch, rugby. Man, how, how did you do it, man? Oh, man, I just, I don't know. I think it's just the way I grew up. I played, I sort of dipped my toes in every every sport and um, tried to experience a bit of everything to find what my passion was and what interested me. So, I don't know. I just like to change it up every now and then and yeah. try things that might um, sort of change the stereotype for women as well, I guess. Yeah, and then that's, that's a massive thing as well. Like, like you know, especially uh, there's been a, a, you know, a big uh, um, development, right, in women's sport. Um, and, and uh, you know, it's, it's awesome to see. And it's awesome to see you um, having a big part of, of doing that in here in, in Victoria uh, and all of that too. So, now that's awesome, man. But uh, uh, just to kickstart us, uh, Sammy, is... Uh, we always do this for those of that, that watch uh, our podcast. We always have the woman because it's like I like to. Um, the discussion is kind of like going into a game, right? And you know, and I know the game always starts with the warm up, from the warm up to the game itself, yeah. and then you know it's that, that last moment, right? You know those tries where you're like you're running, and then you, 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 it's up to you to win the game, and you score that try, but your feet's hanging out, but then you score the try right in the corner, like you know we, we want to finish with that try later on. Uh, with your final encouragements. <laughs> but the warm-up uh, is like this. I want to ask you three questions uh, and uh, just to kind of like warm, warm things up and uh, you know, get ready for um, the game. And so the first question is, uh, Sammy, is, uh, you know, it's time of COVID. I know it's challenging times, it's tough times. And, uh, you know, we pray for a lot of the families out there that, uh, you know, that they get the support that's needed and stay positive. Um, but in COVID, right, Obviously, at home, you know, you've got more time to listen to some music, some old school music, just to kind of get you going. Uh, what has been your go-to COVID song? Um, I've been listening to a lot of chilled music, um, <laughs> except when I'm working out. But I probably, I always tend to go back to like Ziggy Alberts, um, probably yeah. 660. I sort of love yeah. love that chilled, sort of happy vibe. So, yeah. Yeah, that's probably my go-tos. Any, anything, any song by them, really, I get into. So That's yeah. awesome. That's awesome. Because, you know, when you have these go-to songs, Especially in these times, it uh, just you know reminds you to stay positive. Eh? Yeah, and Which I think my think? favorite, my, my favorite song at the moment is um six sixty. Don't forget your roots, and I think at yeah. the moment that's um that's a hundred percent. It's all about just connecting back to family and friends and where you came from, and yeah, it's really relevant at the moment in isolation and lockdown here in Melbourne. So yeah, hundred percent. Yeah, look, like you touched on uh, you know the borders of family, like like I mean, I know for myself, like you know, being busy with what I'm doing and even for yourself too. Sometimes you can be at home with your family, but not be there because mm. you're thinking about other stuff. But these times have really forced um, people to like really have their family time. Eh? So yeah, I feel like a lot of our conversations are a lot more genuine. Whereas you yeah. know, when we're at work, it was just a quick call to back home to mum and be like, "Oh, what's happening?" But now we're really having you know deep discussions and really connecting on a more deeper meeting sort of reason, I guess, with people as well. So it's um, yeah, it's pretty good. Now that's awesome. That's awesome, man. I love I love to see you as well. So. Now, awesome, awesome choice. Second question is, um, you know, got plenty of tries in your career. And uh, if you have a dance move that you're going to use to do a try celebration, 
what move would that be? Cool. Oh, Kemi, my partner, is definitely more the dancer. I think at the moment, just <laughs> I think any, all fellows like, are, eh? <laughs> yeah, always good dancers. They can just move. So I'm, yeah, I'm, I think I'm a good dancer, but I'm really not. But I think probably my big would just be like your big after a try or, you know, you score a winning goal or anything. It's just that big group huddle. Like, especially yeah. now, we can't, you know, we can't high five, we can't get around each other. So just like a big group hug, getting bum taps and, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Babe. <laughs> Oh, that's awesome. And I, that's awesome, Sammy. I, I've seen a funny one, right? I think it was uh, New Zealand schoolboys versus yeah, the, yeah. Uh, England schoolboys many years ago. And uh, one of the guys scored a try. And they all ran in, all sliding through, because it was wet, yeah. and they were all sliding on top of each other. And then the last guy came, and he slid, and he stopped halfway. And the camera was on him, and I was like, oh. <laughs> but no, that's awesome. We'll be a try celebration. And uh, um. And then the last question is um, being COVID, you know, uh, you can kind of experiment a little bit more with making food uh, and those home cooked meals. So, what's been uh, your go to and your favorite COVID meal? Cool. I've had a lot of good feeds. Um, Kevin, my partner, like we were talking earlier, he's, um, he's Filipino, so he loves to get in the kitchen. He, he cooks, so he creates, not cooks. So, he's wow, uh, very, it, messy. It. <laughs> very messy. Very messy. But um, the food's worth it. So, I think. I think my favourite one recently was he did a like a real good low a uh, slow cooked um, lamb shank and that was mm. that was unbelievable and like a lamb roast that we got from a mate from their farm so that was mm. that was pretty good. <laughs> nothing, nothing like some good lamb shanks and uh, lamb yeah. roast, especially in winter, eh? like cold time. Oh, I know that winter warmer, eh? It was so yeah, good. yeah, yeah. Oh, that's awesome. Well, awesome warm up, awesome warm to start the game. Now we're gonna get into the game now. Uh, and this is, uh, this is what we call Get to Know You, uh, where you get to share a bit about your background. Who is, you know, we, we've seen you and what you do with your work and everything, but who is Sammy Homewood? Where did you grow up? You know, when did you start playing sports? Um, and what, what is your passion for what you do now with women's um, rugby and that? Yeah, awesome. Um, so I guess where I started, um, so I grew up in country Victoria um, in Rushworth. So we were on about uh, 200 acres of farm, um, just a bit of a hobby farm. So I've grown oh. up with cows, chickens, goats, horses. Um, mm. I, used to sh I used to show horses, wear a little hat and dress and show horses. So did all that growing up um, on the farm with my younger brother and sister and mum and dad. So yeah, lots of playing and adventuring and, you know, getting dirty and building building cubby houses and all that sort of stuff. So I really value growing up like that because I think it's definitely made me really appreciate the little things in life um, and just made me that little bit stronger. Um, and, yeah, from there, I sort of – pretty much my first main sort of team sport was probably netball and tennis. Yeah. Um, yeah. So grew up – my dad always played tennis when he was younger and he was quite a good tennis player. So we sort of got into the local tennis club there, me and my brother. Um yeah, I love playing tennis um, and then a bit of netball here and there. And then um, when tennis, when I sort of decided to change from that, I took up touch football. Um, and that was probably where I really found my sort of niche and what I really enjoyed. Um, touch footy, just, it was just such a social, fun game and really, you know, it got really competitive. So I took that up. I actually played with my partner, Kev, when we were 16, when we were just mates back then. Wow. Um, so we sort of, yeah, he got me, got me involved and... We got a team together and we played in the Shepherd and Touch Association for, I think, like eight years or something like that. So, you know, got involved there, played, coached, um, coordinated the referee and on the committee and stuff like that. So I really, really got involved and really loved um, loved playing that. Um, played a bit of hockey, dipped my toes in hockey, won, played one year, won a premiership. So that was pretty fun. Oh. <laughs> I had no idea, but <laughs> I think my team, <laughs> team was good. <laughs> um, <laughs> so that was good. I uh, played netball for a fair while um, at one of the Indigenous clubs in Shepparton, so the football netball club there. So me and my partner played there, um, footy and netball. So that was that was good fun, playing some quite high competitive netball there. Um, and what did I do from there? I think I went to, I think I went to AFL. Had a had a yeah. try at AFL, and that was pretty fun. I, th I really enjoy AFL. I think, um, in fact, like rugby, playing rugby now is really the best of both worlds between footy and touch footy. Because I love that, I love that um, contact side of football. But then I love um, the style that you play touch football and sort of that open play. So um, yeah, I think that was really good. But yeah, now obviously a, a rugby player and loving it. <laughs> Not this year, but uh, <laughs> hopefully yeah. we'll be back soon. 
Wow, man, what a what a journey, man! What a what a what a journey! And uh, have you have you found that like uh, because you played a lot of sports, um, a lot of the skills that you've learned along the way has helped you with rugby? Yeah, definitely. I think it's really and I, and I suppose I've always sort of been someone that was quite good at you know I could play most sports and feel pretty comfortable. Except for swimming, I was, I'm no good at swimming. I'm more of a land. No, I'm, I'm like you, I'm, I'm a rock, I sink. <laughs> I can't, I can't, I did swimming for ages, but I have no idea, I'm just hopeless. But yeah. yeah, I definitely think a lot of the skills you learn are really transferable and just um, just playing in different teams, it helps you to learn how to work with others um, and just makes you a bit more, um, I suppose, willing to try different things and work with different coaches and, you know, different people. Um, I think it definitely helps, yeah. Wow, that's, that's, that's awesome. That's awesome. You know, if you're watching this, young athletes out there, you know, try and tip your feet in all sports. It's going to help you. Sammy's done it. He's 100%. achieved a lot. So, uh, you know, get out there. Uh, when sports starts up again, yeah. and, uh, give it a go. Um, awesome, man. And so um, I know that, uh, I think, when was it that you started your role at the, at the VRU? Was it uh, 2016? Um, yeah, I think it was 2016. Or 20, yeah, start, very start of 2016. So, Got straight in there, as you said. Tyrone chucked me in the deep end, and I had to learn to swim. And um, it was pretty. It was really fun. And I think that sort of way was really good because it, um, like we sort of said, it just really helps you to just get involved straight away. You don't, yeah. you know, try and learn everything from the start. Um, I think it's just good to experience it. Um, and so yeah, I got to do that. I, me and myself and Dave Southwood, we, you know, spent every every waking hour out at a club or a school and. <laughs> Um, like it was pretty full on, but I, I think we really loved it. And I think we yeah. loved being involved in the community. We were very hands on with the community. And I think we got to meet, you know, lots of great people like yourself. Yeah. And I think, um, I definitely took a lot of, from my first few years at Rugby Vic away from. So yeah, no, it was really good. That, that's awesome. I mean, uh, like, uh, yeah, like, like they say the best learning is, is cause a lot of people wait to be, um, uh, you know, included. But you know what I like, like you found, and I found when I was working at the VRU is that yeah. like you got to include yourself. Let's get yourself yeah. in there, get yeah. it done. You know, get it. and that's how you learn better. And yeah. You know, and that, so now that's awesome. And uh, big shout out to T. If you're watching this man, shout out to you, brother, and uh, also to Selfie as well. That's awesome. So you, you so you started as a DEO, as a DEO, sorry, um, and then you got involved in like managing a, a lot of the rep teams, eh? And then when did the um, the whole women's rugby? Because I remember when I was there. You know, there was women's rugby, but not as big as what it says is now. So when did that transition happen in, in that for women's rugby? In the- yeah, so it's probably in my first year. Um, I sort of really, I sort of took it upon myself. That was obviously something I'm passionate about is, you know, growing the game for women. Um, as a woman myself, I didn't have a lot of opportunities for, to have play in women's teams growing up. They sort of only just really started to happen as I got older. Um, so a big thing for me was providing opportunities for that youth generation and junior girls. Mm. Um so it's probably, yeah, in the back first year, it sort of started to kick off with our um, youth girls um, under 17 sevens. Um, so we started that out um, and we just sort of had little come tries. There's only about three teams at that stage. Um, and obviously now we have, you know, junior girls, youth girls, sevens, wow. touch sevens. Um, pretty much, you know, our girl can play at any age, which I think is really exciting. Um, and that's only been over, you know, five years that that's come about. So to be able to see change, you know, while working for Rugby Victoria has been, you know, really amazing for me. I think I've really, you know, taken away from that and feel feel proud to be being a part of that and, you know, with the support of a lot of like-minded, you know, families. Um, you know, someone like Soleil, she was really great in helping get that off the ground and driving. And there's just, yeah, there's so many, so many different people that were involved in different parts along the way. And I think they really helped to drive, you know, obviously Rugby Vic drove it, but having support from the community was huge to get that off the ground. So, yeah, I'm just really proud that that happened. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, that, that's awesome. And, uh, you know, uh, if, you, if, you have, if you haven't heard, anybody, we want to say thank you for the work that you do uh, and have done, you know, and uh, for growing the game, especially women's rugby. And, and now, you know, it's really, really important because, you know, before it was all about the guys. Uh, mm-hmm. It was all about the guys getting into, getting on TV and, and all of that, but now you know the, the 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 girls and the women, you know, have that opportunity. Um, and that takes us to my next uh, uh, point: is that uh, you, for those of you that don't know, Sammy was part of the first the first uh, Super Rugby Women's Force team. How was that? Like you know, being a, a, a DO and uh, part of the elite managing team, and then now being for Rebels. How was that, uh, Sammy? Yeah, it was um it was actually massive, especially for me. I like 
my first ever time playing rugby, I was literally, we were at Amy Park. It was a halftime match for women's sevens. And so I remember T saying to me, Sammy, one of the, one of the girls isn't coming. Do you want to fill in? I was like, <laughs> so I was, you know, running out on Amy Park. I think I came up against Ash Masters and had to put a hit on her. And I was like, yeah, oh, yeah. shit, what have I, what have I, yeah, I yeah, like, yeah. into here? But I loved it. And ever since then, um, yeah, I pretty much, I had a few injuries along the way, but played for the state team when it was, when it was before it was Super W. Yeah. Um, I played that year and that was, you know, where everything was, you had to pay for everything and, um, you know, fundraise to be able to go away with that team. Um, a lot of hard work and a lot of behind the scenes, you know, people putting in a lot of extra work to get it off the ground to then, yeah, the first year of Super W, which was huge. I remember the first, you know, I went up and played the Brisbane 10s, which was, that was an experience. Wow the hottest <laughs> hottest weather and muggy and I, I think I was sweating before I even you know took to the field so <laughs> wow. I was rude awakening but yeah I loved it I just loved the you know I loved the girls they all we sort of all you know knew what it, to put in a lot of hard work um didn't necessarily get the rewards but you know seeing people work hard for each other I think is a reward in itself um so yeah, that was sort of my first game, and then the very first Super W game, we we had the short straw. I think we had to fly out to Perth, um, played on a boiling hot day. I remember the shed was a you know a little little tiny hot box and had a little oh. band going, and <laughs> so it was um, <laughs> an interesting. And then I you know because I, I was in the leadership group, I, I said, oh Sammy, you've um you've got to go and do a pre-game interview, and I was like, oh shit. <laughs> You know, I'm just getting ready to play, let alone having yeah, to yeah. speak and things like that. So, but no, it was really, like, it was really good. And, you know, obviously it was a tough game and we <laughs> we got kind of a bit flogged. But I think just having that first hit out and, you know, having everyone come together was pretty amazing. And, yeah, credit to where the program is now. You know, the girls had their first sort of win um, last like, oh, this year, this year before it all sort of got locked down. So um, it's amazing to see you know, from the start to now, um, just how much the program has grown and how many players, you know, players are starting to treat it as a really elite program and really start yeah. to put in that, go that extra mile, I guess. But yeah, no, nah, it was, um, it was a good time that first year. It was really, really challenging, but um, I took so much away from it and I really valued being a part of that team. That's awesome because, I mean, like, you know, we don't know what the journey is like for the next 10 years, but no one can ever take away that the fact that you were part of their foundation team. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You know, and that's something that you can, you can say, yep, yeah, I was part of that. Uh, and especially for myself, like I've got like two girls, uh, my oldest daughter, she's 10 and she had a, a go at league. Um, yeah. And, you know, as, as a father, you know, I wanted to play rugby. I wanted <laughs> to follow in my footsteps, but I can't really force it. But yeah. just for her to know that, um, that there are opportunities for girls, um, at the elite level, um, you know, it's awesome because yeah, you know, no. it gives them like uh, more things to look forward to, you know. And so, uh, now that's awesome, man. And uh, so, so from there, from Super Rugby Women's to then doing a lot of managing work with the elite programs, and that, like, uh, how how was that? And 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 what was and what is your passions now um, for what you do? Yeah. Yeah. So I really like, I really love playing, but I sort of decided to step back from, I suppose, that elite side of um, rugby. Um, I really found my passion in supporting other females and young boys and, you know, youth girls to really um, achieve their dreams and get their yes. opportunities. I just, wow. I just find that, um, you know, it really empowers me and makes me feel like I'm really giving back. And I really enjoy that side of things. Um, just seeing athletes grow as a person not even necessarily in the sport, but just as a person, seeing their development over the years. And, you know, I've been lucky enough to see girls from, you know, when my first year and when we did the athlete development program, um, and that, that was sort of where we took a lot of sort of netball players and, you know, girls from touch football and things like that. So now, you know, they're playing, for instance, like Tiara Min, she's playing Super yeah, well. W, uh, played in the Wallaroos, um, their development sort of side in Fiji. So, you know, to see a girl that was, you know, really quite elite in netball to sort of have a go at rugby and really give it a crack, I think is pretty exciting. And I'm, I'm glad I was part of that journey for her. Um, but yeah, I just think for me, management, I, I really enjoy it. I'm obviously my bigger task at the moment is working with Melbourne Uni um, with the Women's Allen Sevens University Program. Yeah. Um, and that's been really good because a lot of those girls, you know, in Victoria, obviously we don't have a huge base of play, like female players that play rugby in general. And then to try and get a program up in a university that, you know, isn't as um, their, sport, their sport isn't their highest priority, I think has been 
really exciting to be able to make that happen. Um, and now we've got a lot of aspiring players that have, you know, got into that sevens that probably never would have played rugby before. And they, you know, tried sevens and now Melbourne Uni has a women's 15s team out of it. So oh. I think that's pretty, that's been in itself a pretty big win as well. So yeah, no, nah, it's a lot of, lot of stuff going on, but uh, I love it all. I love it all. It keeps me busy. Yeah, that's, that's awesome, Sophie. And I'm, I'm so grateful to have you on this uh, podcast because uh, a lot of people just see, you know, see you doing your thing, but they don't know the hard work behind it. And, and you know, there are probably sleepless nights. Um, yeah. There are nights where you're gonna, they have to sacrifice things that you want to do in order to do that. And so it's, it's important that the community knows that. Uh, and that, uh, and that, so that's, that's awesome. And, uh, you know, we, we can't wait to see uh, the other stuff that comes out of uh, you know what you do because uh, it is needed and uh, you know we we like we always focus on um, our, on on the boys and the opportunities but man like girls if you're watching all right like there's rugby programs and Sammy's been you know, spear spearheading that here in Victoria uh, get in touch um, and also get involved uh, that's awesome Sammy um, if you were speaking to uh, this is we're getting close to school to try. Uh, yeah. If you if you were speaking to to the girls right now, right, if they were in the changing room with you, and you had to give them that, that talk to encourage them before they run out for their last five minutes in the game, um, you know, what what would be something that you can encourage them with, especially in COVID times, how they can continue to um, build momentum, um, and that in these times to stay positive and and and, and dream, what would be something that you can encourage the girls with that are watching? I think my biggest thing with um, young girls that are sort of aspiring is to not necessarily look for that. You know, don't don't go into sport thinking, oh, I'm going to be an elite player at that highest level straight away. I think enjoy enjoy the moment. Enjoy the moment with your friends, with your family. Really soak in what that sport is. Um, I think that's a big thing. I see a lot of kids these days, they come in and they're like, oh, yeah, I'm going to be this straight away. It's like, do the work first. You know, enjoy yourself. Like, you got to, if you don't enjoy the sport, in five years' time, you won't be playing that sport again. So, right. I think it's important not to burn yourself out too early. It's just to really take a step back, soak it all in, um, enjoy the little moments, um, and not focus on winning, focus on enjoyment. And I think that's, yeah. that's a huge thing. And that's just, just in life. If you, you know, always focus on the end goal and don't enjoy the journey, I think um, you're not, you're not going to be fulfilled. So I think, yeah, focus on the little bits and, um, in the end you'll, you'll achieve that big goal. That's awesome. Now, thank you, Sammy. And even for the boys that are watching, um, so definitely some, some, uh, some nuggets there, um, some key points, takeaways that Sammy uh, shared there about, you know, focus on those little things, that one percent us and, uh, you know, enjoy it. Cause if you're not enjoying it, then, uh, you know, you don't want to have that passion or that drive to, 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 to do what you got to do to get there. So thank you, yeah. Sammy, uh, for, for sharing that. And uh, you know, coming to the, the last part of uh, of our uh, um, of our podcast uh, tonight, uh, uh, what's what's something that you can share with, uh, let's say, the families, uh, maybe on behalf of, of, of Rugby Vic, uh, to encourage them uh, in these times of COVID? Yeah, well, I think the biggest thing is you know to know that where you know your whole Rugby Vic family is here. The community is such a supportive community. I've I've received so many people like yourself, Chris, reaching out to me. Um, I've had obviously a really hard year um, on top of COVID. I lost my dad last year, so it's been, yeah, it's been really tough. But I think to know that I do have such, you know, you've got your family and your friends, but don't underestimate the value of your community around you. Um, I've just had so many people there for me, you know, whether it's a call, just a message, someone dropping off something, walking by. I think it's really important to just stay connected with your loved ones. And I think that's something I really valued this year is, you know, stepping back and realising that, it's really important to take the time to, you know, genuinely connect with people. Um, if you don't do that, I feel like you just don't, you're never going to be happy if you don't have that family and those friends around you. I think that's, that's really what life is all about. It's just having that love and support there. Um, it'll get you through anything. Like no matter what, you know, this year's been a strange year, but um, knowing that we're all in it together and we're all going to pick each other up if we fall, I think that's, um, that's something really special. So yeah, your whole rugby big family's here, and you know we're we're not in the office and we're not outside, but we are always here, and um, you're always welcome to call or email and reach out to us at any time if you need. Awesome, Sammy, and you know we're really proud of you, man, because uh, you know we know there has, there has been some 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 challenges, um, but um, you know where you are right now and what you've been able to do, uh, even in, in the midst of that, is a testament to your character. Uh, and then and, uh, us here at Ilama, I want to send our love. 
to, to, to you and your family, uh, but also for what you do for Rugby Vic. Um, and, um, you know, we just, uh, you know, continue to champion you on and, and what you do and we're always here. Um, but again, Sammy, thank you again. That brings us to the end of our, of our morning just again. I uh, really enjoyed um, our conversation and our chats. And, uh, you know, there's been a lot of value shared um, by you today. And for those that are watching, uh, make sure that you take note, okay? And don't just be a listener, but be someone of action that apply what Sammy has shared uh, tonight with us. Uh, Sammy, we wish you all the best uh, for the rest of the year. Uh, and, uh, you know, we're always here if you need anything. Um, but uh, really, really proud of you. Um, and uh, all the best to you and, and, and Kev um, and, uh, and your family as well. Is there any shout outs that you want to do or anything you want to say or shout out to anybody? Um, probably a shout out to um, the Rugby Vic crew. Shout out to Iron Armour. Yeah. And Chris. thanks for um, having me on today. I really, really love just having a chat and, you know, talking about something different um, in lockdown. So, um, yeah, thanks for reaching out to me and showing me love when I, you know, probably needed it. Uh, I was having a bit of a down day, so it was nice to have you reach out yesterday. So, no, I really appreciate you, and I'm glad that I know you and Rochelle and the kids, and um, I hope you guys, you know, stay safe and stay well, and hopefully we'll be back playing rugby and uh, catching up again soon. Yeah, we'll definitely see it. And that's what it's like, and that's sort of the meaning of more than just a game is it's, a, it's more than just what happens on the field. It's, um, it's that family, like you shared, outside of that, and uh, that's us. We link arms together, and uh, we get through the season together, and we'll come out the other end being yeah. champions, and that's so I well. Know. But lots of love to you, Sam, and uh, Kev and the family. Have a, have a good rest of uh, your night, and uh, we'll catch up soon. Thank you for Thank coming you. on. Thank you. Thank you, Sammy.